Hey, I'm Conrad. Welcome back to Ask a Dev. This week's question comes from James, who wants to know what is involved in updating an Apple Watch app for watchOS 2. The main difference between watchOS 1 and watchOS 2 is where your code is running. On watchOS 1, all of your code was running on the iPhone, and your UI updates had to be sent over Bluetooth to the watch, leading to some obvious performance delays. Now on watchOS 2, all of your code is running on the watch itself, which makes the UI a lot more responsive. However, this brings with it a new set of challenges. You now need to synchronize data over Bluetooth if your watch app still needs to access data from your iPhone app to build the features you want. To address this, Apple introduced a new watch connectivity framework, which makes it easier to send messages and transfer files between the phone and the watch. WatchOS 2 apps are far more capable than WatchOS 1 apps. Developers now have access to a variety of watch sensors, including the heart rate monitor. You can track workouts, play music and video, use the digital crown for interaction, and build third-party complications. There are so many new capabilities that it's important to take a step back and reimagine your Apple Watch app in this new environment. For example, maybe you were using a table view for primary navigation before, but now it might make sense to use the Digital Crown's picker controller to scroll through options that way. There are probably features you could build now that you never thought of before. Regardless of the interaction changes you make, try to also make your app as standalone as possible. The best watchOS 2 apps will be the ones that require the iPhone less and less. Eventually, the Apple Watch will be a standalone device, and watchOS 2 is the first chance for developers to start getting used to building an Apple Watch app that doesn't rely as much on the iPhone. That's it for this episode. Tweet your questions to hashtag askadev or leave them in the comments.